Thanks for tuning in to watch The Ordinary Filmmaker. It's Thursday, October the 21st, 2021. In the first teaser video, we got to see what the Nikon Z9 looked like from the back. Well, here we have a photo of the Nikon Z9 from the front. The Nikon Z9 is shaping up to be a terrific camera. We've just seen from three teasers that the capabilities of this camera just look absolutely incredible, that it's a highly capable camera. The leaked specifications look incredible, as does what we got from the development announcement showing that this is going to be a truly incredible camera, similar specs to the Sony Alpha 1. And then of course we got the teaser videos which show off incredible capabilities in terms of being able to record 8K for over two hours without any form of overheating or record limits. A 45 megapixel sensor, 30 frames per second stills, better dynamic range, low noise, and an improved autofocus system. Today, Nikon Rumors came out and said, look, um, we've got a lot of people commenting, sources who are working with this camera, testing the camera out, reviewing it, and they're telling us some incredible things. That the Nikon Z9 is a major update over the D6. That the Nikon Z9 is not playing catch up to the competition, it actually leapfrogs or exceeds the competition. And that autofocus system, it received a major update. It's highly accurate. As you can see in the last teaser video, you can see that the autofocus system locks on and doesn't let go. And this is what Nikon rumor sources are telling us is that this is true, that it, just like you saw in Tony's leaked video yesterday of the a7 IV, the a7IV's autofocus system is much faster, it's much more accurate than the a7 III. So you must be wondering, what is this thing going to cost? Are they going to go to $7,000, $7,500, or even more? With a Canon R3 coming out at $59.99, it leads us to believe that the R1, when it does come out, is going to exceed that by, well, quite a bit more. Now, rumors say that the Nikon Z9 is supposed to cost somewhere between six dollars and $7,000. Well, another source has said and told Nikon rumors that the price is going to shock, but in a good way. Okay, so it's going to shock in a good way. Well, I think it's pretty safe to say that currently, today, the price, the going price for a flagship mirrorless camera is $64.99. Uh, the Sony Alpha 1 goes for $64.99, and Canon's last DSLR, the 1DX Mark III, also at $64.99. So what kind of price would shock you? Well, $59.99 would definitely shock me, and that would put it right at the same price as the newly announced Canon R3 that hasn't even shipped yet. Could you see them going lower than $59.99? I personally couldn't. I mean, I mean, they could. I mean, that would be a huge disruptor. A camera with these capabilities, being able to come in at under $6,000, like $54.99 or $49.99 to me, just... That would be too much of a disruptor, and if this camera is as capable as Nikon is leading us to believe, through the teaser videos, through the development announcement, and what we're hearing from all these people testing the camera, I can't see them going that low. I could see them doing $59.99. That's a shot across Canon's bow. It's, it's truly um, an exciting camera, and I can't wait for the announcement event next week. So what does this mean if you own a Canon or an Icon? And do you believe that the R5 is the best all-around camera right now? It's better than the Alpha 1? Or that the, a, the R1 coming out shortly, whenever that's going to be, is going to be the best flagship mirrorless camera out there? It's going to beat the Alpha 1. It's going to beat the Nikon Z9. Or maybe you own a Sony, or maybe you own a Panasonic, and you think that the cameras within that ecosystem are way better than Nikon. And that Nikon doesn't produce great cameras anymore. I would encourage you to change your opinion, to t take a look at this with fresh eyes, because if you can look at the Z9 for being what it is, and if it truly does leapfrog the competition, that this isn't just a catch-up, and they're leading again, and they're making an amazing camera, enough that if you're honest with yourself, you look at it and go like, wow, I would love to have this camera. This is amazing. Well, that's a good thing. That's a positive thing, because what that does is it further increases competition. It lets Canon know and Sony know that, look, we've got a new yardstick to measure here and we have to make better products. It means that the R5 Mark II is going to be better. The successor to the Sony Alpha 1 is going to be better. And the R1, which has yet to be announced yet, is going to be better. Nikon stepping it up with the Nikon Z9, leapfrogging over the competition, improving many aspects of the camera, providing 
a D3 level of innovation is only going to make this a better marketplace for all of us. So I welcome Nikon's announcement of the Z9. I'm excited to see the fourth teaser coming out next Wednesday. And if the rumors are correct, a day later, we'll get the announcement. And I'm really looking forward to seeing what the price is. And I got to ask you, what price do you think this is going to go for? Do you think it'll be $64.99 and that's the surprise? Do you think it'll go to $59.99? Or do you think it could go even lower? Let me know in the comments section down below, but please do me one quick favor. It doesn't cost you anything. Please like and subscribe. It really does help this channel grow. And I take it as a pat on the back. It makes me, when I look in the morning and I see the analytics and I've got extra subscribers and growth and views, it makes me feel good and encourages me to get out there and produce more content. Now, one last thing, the elephant in the room. While you're watching this, we've either just gotten the announcement of the Sony a7 IV or it's already happened. I'm not going to be covering it right away because there's going to be a ton of videos out with people who have them in their hands reviewing them. And I want to have a chance to look at those reviews as well. I want to boil down the information and then maybe later today or even tomorrow, I'll come back to you with my thoughts on the Sony a7 IV. Now, what we know about the Sony a7 IV at this point is that its price is going to be $600 more than the a7 III. And that tells me one very simple thing, that Sony believes the new a7 IV is worth $600 more. It's also Sony's way of saying, we're no longer the new entry into the market, we're a market leader and we can command this price. Now, some of you in my comments yesterday to the video I put out about the a7 IV, the leaked video by Tony Northrup, this one right here, uh, some of you have said that this is not enough to justify the price and I agree. But you see, in that video, Tony only, only talked about stills capabilities. He didn't touch on video. He just touched on it very, very shortly from vlogging and then said, I'm going to cover off the video or vlogging features in another video. So let's wait a few hours. Let's take a look at the Sony a 7 IV with a new set of eyes because if they can deliver 7K oversampled 4K and produce really good detail 4K without a crop, well, that beats the Canon R6 in video specs. And it comes very, very close to what the R5 can deliver, full sensor readout, 8K oversampled 4K. If they can do full sensor readout, 7K oversampled 4K, then yeah, I can see while delivering 10-bit 422, S-Log3, that it does justify this extra price. And I'm sorry to say that because I really do wish, I, I'm, I'd like to go back in time that $19.99 for the a7 III, what an incredible price. And sadly, this isn't then. This is now, and Sony apparently has thrown an awful lot of innovation into this camera, so let's not judge already. We only had one leaked video from Tony, and it only covered a narrow feature set. So in just a few hours, my time, or by the time you're watching this, the presentation has already come out or is about to come out. So let's see how good it is, and only then find out if the price justifies. But the real story here is the Nikon Z9. I'm looking forward to seeing this camera. I would honestly, based on what I've seen right now, I would love to own this camera, but they would have to price it so very low for me to even be able to consider owning it. I've already got a, a really good camera. I got the Canon R5. And while I do want a second camera for my studio, I can't afford to spend more than about 2000 US for it because it is a second camera. It's not going to improve my quality that much. It just gives me more options, more capabilities, more flexibility. Now, I just have a quick favor to ask for you. If you could please go ahead and like and subscribe. It really does help this channel grow. And I like to think of it as a pat on the back as well. But that's it for now. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great week and we'll see you again soon.